Tonight, we take a closer look at what appears to many viewers to be a seismic and long-term shift left on the part of the mainstream media. So is it happening? And if so, what are the reasons and the ramifications? Here's Fox News media analyst and host of Fox's Media Buzz, Howard Kurtz. The media have been accused for decades of liberal bias by Richard Nixon. by George H.W. Bush, not so much by Barack Obama. The feeling most people get when they hear a Barack Obama speech, my, I felt this thrill going up my leg. And by Donald Trump, who hit back hard. These are just dishonest, terrible people. I'm telling you that. Fake, fake, disgusting news. But have four years of increasingly hostile coverage of Trump made the press more reflexively anti-Republican now that Joe Biden is president? It's a difficult question because Biden has a less confrontational style, but many reporters seem to admire him. The perception of you that got you elected as a moral, decent man. When the New York Post broke the story of Hunter Biden's incriminating laptop, not only did Twitter censor the story and later apologize. It was incredible interference and manipulation of the right to vote and the right to be heard. But NPR's managing editor dismissed it, saying, we don't want to waste our time on stories that are not really stories. The laptop's contents were confirmed, but now that the president's son is out with a book on his drug addiction, many in the media are sympathetic. That Hunter Biden clip, uh, it is really, um, it's a gut punch. I mean, this really humanizes something that former President Trump and the right tried to exploit. The press has been somewhat tougher on the president after an initially slow start over the crisis of migrant children at the border. Was it a mistake not to anticipate this surge? And the barring of journalists from overcrowded facilities. Blocking access to the news media is not leveling with the American people, Mr. President. But some are still deflecting blame from Biden's policies and pointing at his predecessor. The difference here is that a lot of these children are part of a problem that the Biden administration inherited from the Trump administration. Now that Biden is pushing his second straight $2 trillion bill on infrastructure and more, the coverage has been largely sympathetic. One CNN News headline declaring, with an eye on history, Biden moves on big, bold, and progressive infrastructure package. When New York Governor Andrew Cuomo, lionized by the press early in the pandemic, was found to have withheld information on nursing home deaths, the media were slow to pursue it. And when a former aide accused him of sexual harassment, which Cuomo denies, the network evening newscast ignored it, and CNN ran two very brief items. But it was the New York Times that tracked down Cuomo's second accuser, Charlotte Bennett, and CBS that put her on the air. Do you believe that he was propositioning you? Yes. We shouldn't kid ourselves. A lot of consumers of political press, they find the outlets that basically affirm a lot of their views. 60 Minutes drew widespread criticism for a story trying to link a vaccine contract ordered by Florida Governor Ron DeSantis to a political donation. The criticism is that it's pay to play, it's Governor. Wrong. It's wrong. It's a fake narrative. I just disabused you of the narrative, and you don't care about the facts. But the CBS program refused to air most of the governor's response or to admit the piece was one-sided. It seems clear Joe Biden is getting an easy ride so far, that the media downplayed the Cuomo scandals until they were too big to ignore, while being much rougher on such GOP leaders as Florida's Ron DeSantis. There are important exceptions, of course. But that helps explain why, three months after Trump left office, Republican mistrust of the media has reached new lows. Brett? Howie, well done. We'll continue to talk about this. Thank you.